Okay, so let's take a look at number eight here and how we can draw this triangle um, and see whether we have one, two, or possibly zero triangles here that can be formed from this data that's given. So I'm gonna try to draw this sketch here somewhat to um, correct angles and size so that we can kind of intuitively see what's going on here. Okay, so the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw that sketch where you have the triangle and we have the angle listed on the on the um, left side. Okay, and I'm just gonna extend this, this part out here a little bit longer. And we know this angle here that we're looking at here is 55 degrees and we're gonna label that as point E. Now this triangle is labeled as triangle DEF. So what we know, we know E is the center um, vertex here, the center point, the center label. So D is gonna be one of the points up above here and then F is going to be one of the points somewhere along this base here. So I'm just gonna put F in here, just put it in brackets for right now because we're not sure exactly where point F is going to be. Okay, now we do know that it says here DE is going to be 29 centimeters, so I'm gonna mark in 29. Okay, and we need to know that we have a potential length here for DF which is 25 centimeters. So I'm not gonna draw it in fully right now, but I'm just gonna kinda sketch it in as a dashed line. Okay, and I'm not gonna connect it, I'm just gonna draw it part way down and then put it in with an arrowhead and we're gonna label that as 25, okay, and they're 25 units. So from this question, we have one other item that we need to locate here and that is going to be the vertical height. Okay, so what we're going to do is from point D, I'm going to put in a vertical line and that vertical line is gonna hit that base, that segment E to F, and it's gonna form a 90 degree angle with it. Okay, so that means we have potentially a right triangle in here. So what we need to calculate first of all is what is the value of that vertical line. Okay, so the way we would do that is we use our trig function, which is basically our definition of sine. So sine of 55 degrees is equal to the height divided by um, 29. Okay, where 29 is the hypotenuse of that right triangle. So we will cross multiply and solve for h, which is equal to 29 times sine of 55 degrees, and that's going to give us a value of 23.75 units. Okay, so that tells us we, we know how high that vertical line is. Okay, it's 23.75. Now the interesting thing that we are potentially looking at here is we could be looking at another triangle that forms Okay, so if you imagine where that dashed line is right now on the, that I put in blue, there could be another dashed line. Okay, and I'm gonna draw it, try to draw this at the same angle, the same sort of spread here. Okay, coming from point D, going down to here and putting an arrowhead here. So there's a second triangle that could be formed here. Okay, so I'm gonna mark these two dots here. Okay, and I'm gonna call this point like F1, and I'm gonna call this point like F2. Okay, so there's one triangle, a, a bigger one here, D, E, and F1 that could be formed. There's a, potentially, there's a smaller triangle, which is D, E, F2, which could be formed. Okay, and then there's also potentially a triangle that just includes D, E, and then that vertical line. Okay, so I can call this put a point here, I can call this F3, for example. Okay, so we wanna know which of these cases are valid. How do we determine those cases and how do we, we work, work through the thinking with this? Okay, so one of the easiest things to do here is we'll just, we're just going to um, create a, uh, a little table here of values. So I have segment DF, okay, which, where the, and the, remember the F could be in one of three positions. It could be F1, F2, or F3. That's segment DF. Then I have segment DE, which is the 29 value. And then I have segment H, which I've calculated. So let's just record and we'll just put all these numbers in. So we know DF is 25, we know DE is 29, 
and we know h is 23.75. Okay, so from that, we can make do some analysis on what we have here. So the way we have to look through, think about this is let's go through a series of sort of like if statements to kind of um, logically figure this out here. Okay, so the very first thing that we need to know is the df, I'm just going to put this in a circle here in a different color, the df is the critical number here because this is the one that we're going to be comparing to all the other uh, in all our cases here. Okay, so we can say here if df, segment df, is equal to the vertical height, okay, we have one triangle only. Okay, and that one triangle would be at where the segment would be come down to point F3. Okay, so we have one triangle only, and it would be a right triangle. But we have some other cases here. So if DF is uh, greater than segment DF, okay, if it is greater than segment DE, okay, that means we'd have to imagine for a second, let's say that instead of 25, it was say 35. Okay, if that side is that long, if it's greater than the other side, DE, we also have only one triangle only. Okay, because we can only form one triangle and that triangle would be somewhere here in point F, where point F1 would be, okay? Or actually be, it would even be a little further out. Okay, so if DF is greater than DE. Okay, but the cases we have here is we don't have that case. We have here DF, so we're gonna have another case here. If DF is greater than H, okay, so it's bigger than H, okay, and um, DF, okay, is less than DE, okay, so we have to put these two together. If that's the case, then we have two possible triangles. Okay, because that means we could form a triangle at F1 and we could form a triangle at F2. Okay, because it's bigger than H, but it's also less than the 29 part, which means that that side 25 can form a triangle somewhere around F1 and we could swing that line backwards and it would form another triangle somewhere around F2. Okay, and then there's a fourth case which we have to consider is that if segment DF is less than h okay so first we did equals then we did greater than h and if it's less than h then we have zero triangles that can be formed because if df cannot even reach the vertical height there's no way for us to close the triangle at any point f1 f2 or f3 okay so therefore we can't form any um any triangle Okay, so this is the thinking that you have to kind of go through where that side, that 25 side, okay, or in this case DF is the, is the critical number that we have to compare to everything else. So if we look at the cases here, the one that actually works for us is that DF is greater than H, but it's less than 29. Okay, so this is the case that's true. That means we have two possible triangles that we can form here. Okay, so what we can do now is we can go through and draw our triangles out here in their different cases. Okay, so let's do case one here. So case one means that our triangle is going to essentially be a triangle here at point F1 from our previous picture. Okay, so we have 29, 25, 25, 29, and then 55. Okay, and this is going to be D, E, and F. Okay, and I'll just put here, it's really going to be more like F1 because it's that part that swings out a little bit further from there. And then case two, okay, so I'll draw this one underneath, okay, is going to be the slim triangle where it's going to connect on side F, 
where F2 would be. So it would actually look like this. Okay, F2 would be here, E would be here, and then D would be here. This would be 25, 29, okay, and this would be 55 degrees. So you can kind of see that we have one triangle where the arm DF swings outwards a little bit, and then we have another one where the arm D, and then we'll say DF2, swings inward a little bit. Okay, so these are our two cases here that we have to consider, case one and case two. So all we have to do here is we need to calculate a couple of things here. We need to calculate the angle D, angle F, and we need to calculate the length E to F, okay, in both cases, D, um, F, and then E to F there. Okay, so <clears throat> the way we wanna go about this is um, we're gonna end up using the sine law in order to calculate this because we are given an angle and we are given uh, opposite sides, but we, are, we don't have the sides adjacent to them as known, so we can't use the cosine law for this. So in order to solve this, we are going to be using the sine law. Okay, so we first start off by writing our, our uh, known trig ratio here. So one of our trig ratios here is going to be sine of 55 over 25. Okay, and that is going to be equal to, we can pick one of our angles here. We'll pick, I'll pick sine, I'll pick the F1 here. So sine F1 all over 29. Okay, and then we are just going to cross multiply and then find the inverse so that we can find the missing angle here. Okay, so I'll do this uh, cross multiply and move the sine over here. So we will have sine F1 is equal to 29 times sine of 55 degrees divided by 25. Okay, and then if you crunch this out on your calculator, you will see that it's equal to 0 0.9502. Then we have to take the inverse sine of both sides to give us angle F1. Okay, and that's, so that's, we can write it in notation like this. Okay, and that means our angle here is 72 degrees. Okay, so that's gonna be one of our missing angles. And then to find angle D, okay, we will just use a shortcut method. We're gonna, we know the angles in a triangle equal 180 degrees. Okay, so this will be 180 minus 55 minus 72, and therefore angle D is going to be equal to 53 degrees. Okay, and then the only thing that we don't know um, here is uh, the side EF. Okay, so we would have to calculate the missing side for EF. So the way we're going to end up doing that is we have to use the sine law again. So we already know, we've already filled in our angles here. So we can say sine of 53 degrees all over EF. Okay, which is, I'll put it together as a, the segment EF1, okay, which is the one we're trying to find. Okay, we can then make that equal to our other sine ratio here, 55 over 25. Okay, and then we just cross multiply and work out our values. So this is going to be, um, we're going to bring EF to the top and sine 55 to the bottom. So it's going to be 25 times sine 53. Okay, divided by sine of 55, and that is going to be equal to 24.4, okay, 24.4 centimeters when we work it out as a decimal. So the three unknown values that we need are this one, okay, that's their distance, 24.4. We need to know angle D, which is 53, and angle F, which is 72. Okay, so for each of these cases here, we're, we would end up finding three values. Okay, and then to do case two, we're actually gonna set it up the same way. So case two, um, I'll just kind of get it started and you can kind of, I'll put in the final answers for what you need to have here. But again, we can have, um, we have to find the two missing angles, D and F2. Okay, so we can start by the same thing. We're gonna do sine of 55 over 25 is equal to um, sine of F2 all over 29. 
Okay, and then you should be able to cross multiply and figure out F2 from that equation. Okay, and then we need to figure out angle D, which is the same thing that we uh, did before. Um, so we can work that out. Okay, and, and in the end here, we already know that sine 55, sine F2 over 29. So we, we can actually get F2 already, or, or sorry, angle, um, uh, so we can get sine F2, or angle F2, and then we're going to work out angle D, okay, the same way. So we can take 180, we're going to minus 55, we're going to minus the, um, the other one. Okay, and then we are going to work out the missing length EF, segment EF2, okay, where we can then use the same technique, where we can figure out sine of 55 over 25, and then is equal to one of the other, the, the other ratios here. Okay, so I'm going to leave that question at this here. So see if you can work through the, the remaining two triangles here. But I'll give you the, the, the missing angles here as the answers. So in one case here, um, angle F, okay, or in this case here, F2 is equal to 108 degrees. Okay, angle D is going to be equal to 17 degrees. Okay, and then side EF... Okay, or in this case, EF2 is equal to 8.9 centimeters. Okay, so we'll need, you need to work out the, the sine law equations for those. But they work exactly the same as case one. Okay, you just have to plug in, the, just generate the formulas and then work out the, uh, work out the answers for those. Okay, so that's an explanation of how this question works. It's a little bit complicated because there's a lot of thinking and logic about how you draw the triangles. Okay, and then remembering and understanding what the cases mean, okay, and which line here is the important one, okay, and how we compare it. And then you, from there, once you have isolated your triangles, you can draw out your two cases and then apply the sine law in order to figure out the unknowns. Okay, so that's how you want to work through this question. It takes a little bit of time to get through it, but um, I think if you go through it slowly, you should be able to figure it out.